For centuries, the world's waters have connected us. Explorers, traders, scientists, and fishermen traveled our oceans looking for new resources and a greater understanding of the world. Our wild ocean frontiers are disappearing, and it's up to us to conserve the most important wild areas that remain. In 2009, President Bush designated three new large areas for ocean conservation. When the Marianas Trench Marine National Monument was designated, we partnered with the people of the Mariana Islands to protect this isolated jewel of the oceans. The Marianas Monument supports vast numbers of fish and birds, breathtaking habitats, and healthy, relatively untouched ecosystems. An ocean environment unlike any other on Earth. It is a tropical summer day in 2009. A slightly tattered fishing vessel, the Lady Carolina, is moored at a dock in Saipan Harbor. How are you feeling right now? I feel great. I'm excited. I got plenty of sleep last night, which was a surprise since we were supposed to leave earlier. I thought it'd be tough to turn, but... I didn't get any sleep. I was so excited. Yeah. On this day, the Lady Carolina is readied for a voyage that will harvest something other than bounty from the sea. On board are local Saipan activist, international journalist, and one recent Saipan High School graduate. They're all about to set sail on an expedition of discovery and imagination. There's a yellow hue to the article plume. Look at the yellow there. When it, oh my God. Look at, this is the first voyage to the Marianas Trench Marine National Monument. Whoa, look at that. Holy moly. Wow. Look at that red. The Marianas Trench Marine National Monument is a remote, seldom visited underwater marvel. It's located in a chain of islands with U.S. sovereignty, but self-governed under the Constitution of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, or the CNMI. At the far northern end of the archipelago, the U.S. monument protects one of the last nearly untouched coral reef systems in the world. And so here we have what is relatively a pristine system. And that's hard to say on planet Earth these days because there isn't much that you can call even near pristine. They're very, very isolated from the southern islands and they're very, very isolated from um, the stressors of human influence. The monument also includes underwater volcanoes called seamounts, erupting in a fury of gas, ash, and molten rock. There are deep ocean hydrothermal vents homes to little understood communities of life, which thrive in a superheated chemical stew. Well, the hydrothermal vents are, are centers of intense movement of very, very hot water. And the temperatures of these can be quite extreme, ranging from more than 140 degrees Fahrenheit to over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And our interest in that is because we discovered that life can exist in extreme environments, far more extreme than we ever thought. You know, extreme conditions and, and life is thriving, so we have a lot to learn. And beyond the mysteries posed by its extreme biology, the monument includes the least explored place on our planet. Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench, the deepest canyon on Earth, more people have walked on the moon than have explored the dark, crushing pressure in this seven-mile-deep oceanic abyss. And I think that the fact that it's someplace that we managers even will never get to go, uh, it always has that sense of mystery that will probably never be dispelled, but also keeps it in our imaginations. I've never been on the open ocean like this before.
As the Lady Carolina and the first Voyagers leave Saipan Harbor, recent high school graduate Dennis Chan is undertaking a very personal first, his first extended boat ride on open ocean. A Saipan native, Dennis wrote a winning essay to become a part of this adventure. Growing up, I never thought I would ever, ever even touch those islands. Like, they're just pretty much dots on a map. Hardly anyone has gone up there, and I think I was pretty lucky. Dennis and the Lady Carolina will end up 300 miles from Saipan at the three northernmost islands of the Marianas Archipelago. Around these islands, the seafloor, the water, and the marine life are protected in what is called the Islands Unit of the Monument. The islands themselves are wildlife sanctuaries managed by the CNMI government. Beyond the island's unit, the U.S. Marine National Monument encompasses the seafloor of the Marianas Trench and the seafloor surrounding 21 submarine volcanoes and hydrothermal vents. The monument, in short, protects a unique coral reef system and a deep sea environment unlike any other on Earth. And these environments exist here because of plate tectonics. As part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, the Marianas Archipelago is located where two plates of the Earth's crust meet in a game of geological chicken. One of those plates has to give. The Marianas Arc is geologically significant because it sits precisely at the point of convergence of two oceanic plates, the Pacific Plate to the east and the Philippine Plate to the west. This convergence produces the Marianas Trench as the Pacific Plate dives downward almost vertically beneath the Mariana Islands. A major consequence of this convergence is volcanism. This volcanism built the northernmost Mariana Islands, and it continues to make most of those islands uninhabitable. Ironically, that same volcanic activity creates an oasis of nutrients and life due to a seafloor punctuated with seamounts. Seamounts are submarine volcanoes. These are active constructional volcanic centers. These seamounts represent a very important part of the environment of the Pacific because ocean water is focused and moves upward along their flanks, bringing nutrients up near the surface. These are sites of life. It's not just on the islands, but also on the seamounts where you see significant life. Uh, very few people have been up here, so I feel pretty excited and lucky to be part of it. For the first voyagers, however, many of the wonders in these islands pass by at depth unseen. There is, for instance, the Champagne Vent. That's weird looking stuff. Let's get some really good pictures before A mile under the ocean surface, oh, liquid oh, carbon bubbles. dioxide bubbles up from seafloor vents. The CO2 is liquid largely due to the tremendous pressure of the water above it. When found, it was one of only two sites on the entire planet known to vent liquid carbon dioxide. So the liquid CO2 I've never seen less anything like this. Than one incredible thing to the next. Pools of molten sulfur are even more unique. While deposits of liquid sulfur are found on the Earth's surface, finding large pools of it is unusual. Finding pools of molten sulfur on the seafloor? That's a first. While these discoveries might seem of interest to only scientists, they hint of how much we don't know about our planet and our oceans. Well, in recent years, submarine expeditions have discovered tremendous diversity and unusual life, strange colonies populating the seafloor around the Marianas. When I went to school, I was taught that all life on our planet was due to the sun through the process of photosynthesis and that we were totally dependent upon a friendly sun. In fact, that's not true. Yes, photosynthesis drives a lot of the life systems on our planet, but there's another operating system called chemosynthesis that occurs in the deep sea, where bacterium have figured out over eons of time how to duplicate the process of photosynthesis in the dark, using not the energy of the sun, 
but using the energy of the earth itself. Organic matrix. The microorganisms of chemosynthetic communities form the basis of a food chain supporting higher forms of life. That is so For instance, cool. at a depth of almost 1,400 feet, researchers discovered a new species of fish flitting across the scorching surface of a molten sulfur pool. Researchers aren't certain, but apparently the fish are feeding on microbes, chemosynthetic colonies of life that find the reactions between hot sulfur and seawater a perfect energy source. It's a bizarre food chain made possible by volcanic chemicals vented into the sea. Extreme conditions with the molten sulfur cauldrons that are down below and the, the extreme temperatures and the highly acidic waters. And then you have mussels and shrimp that are thriving there. It's like, wow, how does all of that happen? Our discovery of hydrothermal vents and the chemosynthetic life forms that live there is fairly recent. In fact, it occurred in 1977. So in scientific terms, a very recent and major discovery. And these are spectacular communities that we knew nothing about only a few years ago. This is one of the principal reasons that it's important to set aside part of the Marianas and protect this, these areas for future study. Been on the water about 36 hours now. And I'm finally just about to reach our destination, Mog. As the first voyagers reach their destination of Mog Lagoon, they are truly beyond civilization. The water and seafloor surrounding Mog and two of its neighboring islands are protected in the island's unit of the Marine National Monument. However, the lands here, above water, the islands, are part of the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. The CNMI manages these islands as wildlife sanctuaries. Casual visitors aren't allowed on shore. If an island isn't open to being visited, it's probably for a reason. The reason here is for biosecurity, to protect the ecosystem from invasive species. On neighboring Guam, for instance, the non-native brown tree snake wiped out nine native bird species in the wild. Colonies of the yellow crazy ant can also pose a threat. They swarm ground nesting birds, blinding them with formic acid. These threats can easily hitch a ride with unwary visitors. And it's very easy for someone not to notice an ant or some other species of insect. And maybe it's not even a living animal. Maybe it's seeds that you're taking and you don't know it. Where some cases even rats on their vessels. But in the unpopulated northern Mariana Islands, if a species like the brown tree snake were established before anybody knew about it, you could get to the point where those bird species would be gone very quickly and there would be no opportunity to save them. The waters in Mog Lagoon are, however, open to exploration. Here again is a unique association of life found nowhere else. A coral reef dependent on sunshine, thriving almost side by side with chemosynthetic life. One of, the, one of the unique opportunities that MOG offers, especially the inner lagoon waters of MOG, is a comparison uh, of the two types of energy sources um, in, in feeding the food chains. These inner waters of MOG offer a nice opportunity to uh, start studying that. But while the healthy, robust coral reefs in the island's unit are beautiful to look at and interesting to study, their value goes well beyond that. First, they can help us understand how best to manage coral reefs impacted by human pressures. Do they represent a very unique ecological endpoint that is going to help the CNMI and Guam understand their coral reefs down south and manage them? Yes, they do. We can understand things that we might have lost along the way as more and more exploitation occurs on the reefs that surround uh, human populations. And because commercial fishing is banned within the boundaries of the island's unit of the monument, the monument waters offer benefits outside of the monument boundaries. One of the things that they offer uh, is an export of larvae, especially from large reproductive fish. These marine protected areas, and especially large systems like MOG, allows for the chance for um, these, these fish to grow larger and produce major amounts of, of larval output. While the presidential proclamation, which created the monument, calls for a permitting process to allow recreational fishing and cultural uses in the island's unit, the ban on commercial fishing is not without its critics. The ancient Chamorros, to a, the greatest extent possible, they depended on their marine environment. 
<laughs> Some descendants of the island's first people, the Chamorros and Carolinians, say the closure denies them access to traditional marine resources. But others see it in the light of another native tradition, living a life based on the greater good. For the, the up and coming generations, what would be detrimental to their collective interaction with the rest of the world is that propensity to keep drawing those divisive lines, to keep utilizing culture as an excuse to not move forward. It's the greater good. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about us. It has been for, for millennia, and it should continue to be the case. Those islands are our home. The fact that we've established a monument up there, to protecting these uh, really beautiful islands, in a, in a sense, our heritage. We should do everything we can to further protect our islands, our home, our oceans, our fish. The environment is who we are.